What's up guys? Today I'm going to show you 10 tips and settings to increase the speed of your 3D printer, reducing your print times. Now there's actually going to be more than 10 tips in this video, so make sure you watch until the end. The first tip is actually in the design stage of your 3D models. There are two main things you can implement into your CAD design software to speed up your prints. The first is removing any excess material from your models. This can be reducing the thickness of the walls or extrudes where not much strength is needed, or by cutting out solid sections of your part entirely. Here I've created an external hard drive case that clips onto your laptop and two and a half millimeters was plenty for each wall. Also on this part, instead of having a solid back wall of the case, I added three cutouts to reduce the material usage. Now triangles work very well for this purpose for two reasons. One, triangles generally are very strong and two, Depending on your print orientation, you can use triangles to eliminate the need for supports under overhangs. Now this leads into my second design tip, which is to eliminate the need for supports in your design. By using triangles with an angle of 30 to 35 degrees, or more simply using 30 to 35 degree chamfers under large overhangs, you can avoid using supports entirely. On this part, instead of keeping this large horizontal overhang, I eliminated the need for supports by adding 35 degree chamfers. I didn't even need these chamfers to cover the entire overhang, as most printers can print small horizontal bridge sections like this with ease. By reducing the material of your part and the supports from your prints, this can greatly reduce your print time. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay offers custom PCB designs, prototyping, and on-demand print services. PCBWay's 10-year anniversary is coming up this June-July, and for their anniversary, they have started a design badge contest where you can win $1,000 cash. To enter, you simply need to make a PCB design on their website with the PCBWay logo as well as the number 10. I'll put a link in the description below where you can learn more if you're interested. Now, speaking about print speeds, this video would not be complete if I didn't mention just increasing the print speed speed value of your printer within your slicer. Now, if you have a bamboo printer like me, this is extremely easy to do. You can turn your printer into sport or even ludicrous mode, which increases your print speeds by 25% or 66% respectively. However, if you don't have a bamboo printer, pretty much all printers and slicers allow you to adjust this value manually. I would recommend Googling and going on forums and seeing what others online are using for print speeds for your specific printer. And you can use this information to adjust the linear print speeds and also the acceleration of your printer. Now, depending on how much you increase the speed value, you may want to increase your print temperatures or your nozzle temperature specifically within your slicer. For bamboo printers, when you're using ludicrous mode, you'll usually want to increase your nozzle temperature by 10 to 20 degrees Celsius. The reason being when you're printing extremely fast, sometimes your printer will not have enough time to melt the plastic through the nozzle. And by increasing the nozzle temperature, it will allow that plastic to melt and flow through your nozzle fast enough to accompany those print speeds. Now there's many other print speeds that you can adjust other than the print speed of your printer. One setting that I like to change is the first layer speed. Now if you are not having any issues with the print sticking to your print bed, you can usually increase your first layer speed. But there are also other print speeds that you can adjust including the inner and outer wall speeds. Now depending on your print, if you want to have extremely fine detail on the outside wall of your print, you may want to keep this down to a slower speed to make sure that fine detail is printed correctly. However, if you have a flat wall or a print that you don't necessarily care about the print surface too much, you can increase the inner and outer wall speeds to speed up your prints where you don't care so much about the quality. All right, so one underrated setting to increase your print speeds is by increasing the volumetric flow rate of your filament material. Now, if you're using official Bamboo Lab PLA, you'll notice that the volumetric flow rate by default is significantly higher than what it would be if you set your slicer to generic PLA. Now Bamboo Lab says they do this to account for impurities from these generic worst quality filaments, but I have had no issues by increasing the volumetric flow rate of these generic cheaper PLAs up to the value that Bamboo Lab specifically uses for their official PLAs. Now again here, if you're increasing the flow rate, you may also want to increase the nozzle temperature. If you do notice you're having issues by increasing the flow rate, try increasing the nozzle temperature and see if that fixes your problems. Now the next tip is one that you probably 
probably already are aware of, and that is by increasing the layer height of your print. On most printers, the default print layer height is around 0.2 millimeters, maybe even 0.25 millimeters. However, depending on the print and the surface quality that you require, you can usually bump this up to 0.3 or even higher layer heights. In my case, I have tested up to 0.36 millimeter layer height, which can be achieved by using a larger diameter nozzle. That's another tip. If you do get a larger nozzle and you don't need high detailed surface quality of your prints, using a larger nozzle and larger layer height can really decrease your print times. This next tip depends on what 3D printer you're using, but if you're using a bamboo printer specifically with an AMS and you're doing multiple color changes within one single part, you really need to calibrate your AMS and the purge of your filament changes in order to really save on the material and the print time. Now I have another complete video about this topic showing how to calibrate and minimize the purge material usage of your AMS. So I'm gonna defer here and make sure you watch this video at the top right to see how to do that. Now now this next tip you probably already know, but I'm going to give you a lesser known fact. Most slicers allow you to change the solid wall thickness of your parts before filling in the infill. Now I find you can usually get away with just using two solid walls around the perimeter of your print. And depending on your part, you can even sometimes get away with just one wall. Especially if you're printing a prototype where you don't actually care about the strength of the part, using one wall will really speed up your print time. Now most people know that they can adjust this for the walls, but one thing that really increases speed of your printer that I found is reducing the number of top and bottom shells of your print. Especially for prints that have a large base on the print bed, if you have three solid bottom shells on this large surface area, it can actually take quite a long time to print. And by reducing the top and bottom shells down to two or even sometimes one layer, this allows you to get to your infill quicker and print that part much faster. Speaking of infill, this probably goes without saying as well, generally you don't need very large infill percentage on your prints. I find using 10 to 15% infill is okay for most prints and also the type of infill will also matter. For my bamboo slicer, I like to use the gyroid infill, but I also find the honeycomb infill is pretty quick and strong as well. Now for the next one, depending on what your part is, you may be able to use vase mode, which will really speed up the time of your prints. Now you may already be aware of this, but vase mode will print one single layer around the perimeter of your part. For things like vases, this can be extremely extremely efficient, but you will be surprised about what other parts you can print with vase mode as well. Now here I have pretty much maxed out the build volume of my Bamboo Lab P1S3 printer, and I printed this entire vase in one and a half hours. Another quick setting that you can change to reduce the print times of your printer is by adjusting the seam position to nearest. Now in some prints, you will want to have that seam aligned onto the back or the side of your model so that you can't generally see it. But depending on the part, by using nearest, you can actually save quite a bit of print time. Now this next tip is removing the brim or the raft of your part. Now depending on how well you have your printer dialed in, you typically do not need to use brims or rafts on your parts. Now if you're printing very small parts where the surface area area on your print bed is very small. Generally, you will need a brim or a raft in order to make sure your bed adhesion is sufficient. However, for larger parts or if you're using a print bed that sticks very well, you usually don't need to use these brims or rafts at all. And there you have it. Let me know in the comments what video you'd like to see next and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.